Creating the popular red and white look in Luminar Neo is super easy. It can be used for the upcoming Valentine's Day or for romantic engagements, wedding photography and so much more. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create the look, how to save it as a preset and how to apply it to your own images. Now it's going to be really easy, so let's get straight on it. OK, so moving into Luminar Neo, where are we going to start in the catalog module? Now, here we have the three sample files that come with this video. And if you want to follow me along on your own computer and use the sample files I'm using, then jump into the description of this video, follow the link and get the images now. Import them into the application and we can start. To start, it's very simple. Let's select this image with a couple on the street and we're going to move it into the edit module. In the edit module, we're going to build the preset and the look in three steps. First, we're going to look at the development. Then we're going to look at the color adjustments. And finally, at the end, we're going to look at the portrait adjustments. So starting with the developing part, well, we have the image and we can move our attention towards the main editing toolbar where we're going to start in the essentials. Here we're going to go into the develop tool and the first thing we're going to build in is sharpness and noise reduction. But actually before that, just open the optics and make sure that the auto defrange or any other option here is on. This way, when you apply to your image in the future, you will already have it checked and you will not have to come back here. Now, talking about sharpness and noise reduction. As we building a look, which will be more general for number of pictures, we're just going to add a standard values. When it comes to portrait photos, sharpening is usually set to somewhere around 40 and masking around 70. Masking. The reason why we're increasing it is to make sure that we only sharpening areas with the texture and edges. So we are not sharpening some of the blur or soft areas. So that's the sharpness. Now, when it comes to noise reduction, the standard value is usually around 15. So let's add 15 and leave it there. So that's the basics for sharpness and noise reduction. Now, moving into the light and blacks and whites, let's have a look at the image. Well, first thing, we're going to increase a little bit of the exposure. Nothing crazy, maybe just somewhere. Let's have a look. We want the sky and the image to be a little bit overexposed, so maybe just somewhere around 0 0.2. After that, when it comes to contrast, we want to have a lot of contrast, so we're going to add, let's go crazy to, let's say, 20. And then we're going to look at our highlights and shadows. In general, the way it's set, you bring the highlights down and you increase the shadows. Now, looking at it, the highlights, let's say that we're going to go maybe around minus 20. And with the shadows, we can open them up a little bit more. Well, let's say maybe around 40. So that's it for our light section. When it comes to blacks and whites, uh, with the blacks, we're going to bring them down. We're going to make the blacks darker. And by doing that, again, we're going to add even more contrast to the image. So blacks, let's go crazy again. Um, I think minus 20. With the whites, we're going to actually add a lot. Remember, we're creating a red and white effect. So what we're going to do, I think probably even like around plus 50 or something like that. So plus 50 on whites, blacks in minus 20, highlights on minus 20 and shadows on 40. So that's this section. After this, we're going to move into our color section where looking at the image, it's a little bit warm for me. So we're going to bring the temperature slider down very gently to, let's say, minus three to just add a little bit of a cool effect. We're not going to adjust our tint. That all looks good. Only thing we're going to do is we're going to adjust our saturation and bring it down just to somewhere around minus 10 to crush the overall saturation. We have increased adding extra contrast. Now, before we leave from here, one more thing we're going to do, we're going to adjust our curves, <laughs> but don't worry. It's not going to be nothing crazy. Just very simple S curve. Well, not on the white curve. We're going to add very light S curve on our reds, greens and blue curves. So with the red, well, what we're going to do one, two and three dots, nothing crazy. And then the one in the upper part, we're just going to bring it up a little bit gently. Let's say somewhere around here. 
Then we're going to take the second dot and just bring it down a little bit. You see how we're creating the S shape? Very gently. Then we're going to do pretty much exactly the same for the other curves. So we're going to go into the green, create one, two, and three dots, and just drag them again. So something like this. And with the blue, well, one, two, and three. And the reason why we're doing this is we're actually adding contrast, but into the colors. So where with the light, where we add the contrast, that increase the contrast between the darker and brighter areas in the image by adding S curve into all three color curves and creating the same shape, we are adding contrast into the colors, which will help us then to give us a material to work with in the color section. So this is it for the basic development. So we can close it. And what we're going to do, we're going to move into the color tool here in the essentials tools. Open it up and we're going to be focusing on the HSL panel. So let's open that. Let's make sure everything is nice and visible. And we're going to start with the hue. Now you can click on this gray drop down box. And here is a choice between hue, saturation and luminance. With the hue, you adjust the hue of the color. So you can have your red, like really purple, or you can have red having almost orange and so on with the other colors. Similarly, with the saturation, you can have your red really saturated or almost black and white. And finally, with the luminance, you can have your red really dark or really bright. So that's what we do for the individual colors. Now, coming back to the hue, and looking at our red, we want our red to be more on the orange side. So we're going to take the color and just bring it gently to, let's say, around yeah, plus 10. Now, with the greens, we actually don't want the greens to be yellow or orange. So we're going to increase that to around 20. We want to avoid the yellowy strong greens. And finally, as red and magenta are very much connected together, we're also going to increase the magenta towards the rest, red side. So we're going to go for plus 50. Once this finished, we can move into our saturation where we actually going to bring the saturation of the red down just a little bit, maybe like minus 10 with the orange also a little bit, but a little less minus five. Then with the green, a lot to <laughs> minus 30. And on the top of it with the cyan also to minus 15 or oh, somewhere around there. Now, finally, with the purple and magenta, minus 10 on purple, just to crash these very vivid colors, and minus 20 on magenta as well. And finally, going into the luminance, well, we're going to make our red much darker, so we're going to bring it down to, yeah, let's say, minus 20. Uh, with the green, <laughs> we're trying to get the radius of the green as much as we can, so we're going to bring it down to... Yeah, I think minus 15 looks good. And then blue to darken the blue a little bit. Nothing crazy. Minus 10. Purple probably around there as well. Minus 10. And magenta to minus what? 20. Let's have a look. I think around 20 or 25. So that's our color part. Now we can close it. And before we leave the essential section, one more tool is a structure AI. So we're going to open it. And what we're going to do, we're going to take the amount slider and just bring it down. Now, the structure AI is a great tool which helps us to add details and clarity to the image. So if I shift it up, it will add a lot of it. Now, another advantage of the structure AI is that it has a human aware tool built in automatically. So regardless how much I do add or remove, you see, it doesn't have an impact on a person. So actually what we want to do here, we want to create a glow behind the people. So we're going to take the amount and bring it down. Now, if I overdo it, you will see the glow, but we're not going to go that crazy. I think just somewhere around minus 30. Quick look before and after, and we can close the structure AI tool. So that was the second step, the color adjustment. And finally, it's time to adjust and add a little bit of a portrait um, development. So for that, we need to go towards the lower part of our toolbar, open the portrait section. And here we're going to adjust the face and skin sections. Let's start with the skin. It's a little bit smaller here. Let's just zoom on the face a little bit closer and very gently just add a little bit, maybe somewhere around plus 15 on the amount. Now the application will automatically scan the image, look for the faces and apply the amount to them. Shine removal. I quite like this one. So let's go to 
around plus 80. And that's about it for this part. Close the skin AI, zoom out. And with the face AI, we can add a little bit of light into their faces. And if we want, we can open the eyes. And in the eye section, I really like to use the eye enhancer. Now, there is not really eye in this image, so you're not going to be able to see it. But follow me, as we are creating a preset and look, you will be able to use it on other images. So that's that. Now, looking at our photo, let's have a look at the before and after. And I think it looks great. Now, it's a little bit stronger, but once we're going to save it, so let's go ahead and click on the three dots in a circle down here, select save as preset, and that will bring us nicely into the preset section or preset module and my presets section. Here, we're going to call the preset, so red and white, and we simply going to hit enter. So now we have the preset ready. So now when we go into the catalog module and in the catalog module, select another photo, for example, this one here, or maybe even the people in the garden, we, we're going to select it, move it into the presets module, then navigate into my preset section. And now when we hover over it, you can already see the effect. When I click on it, it will be applied. And once it will be applied, we will then be able to take the slider and actually adjust the strength. So it doesn't need to be this strong, but it's better to build the preset a little bit stronger. So then you can adjust the amount because you can't do the opposite. You cannot apply more of the value. So this is why we often make it a little bit stronger and then adjust it down based on your photo. So I think something like this for this photo here. And let's just open the film strip, select the second photo, give it a second, and let's also apply the preset to it. Again, a little bit too strong, so let's just bring it down. Maybe around, yeah, minus 60. Um, minus 60, 60 on the strength. Now, with this image selected, of course, you can always go into the edit module, and in the edit module, you can go into the edits on the top of your toolbar, where you can see all the edits that were applied as a part of these presets, and you can adjust them. So anything you want to do, let's say that you would like the image to be a little bit darker. You can always adjust the exposure. You can remove or add more contrast and so on. So that's about it for this preset. We have it saved. However, if you would like to speed up the entire process and maybe get some additional variation of this red and white look, you can have a look at our romance bundle, which does include the full collection of the red and white presets, which I'm going to show you right here. And basically with that, you get the 10 variation of the same look we have just created. So you can just get them, download them, install them, and basically start applying them to your photos. So you get all sorts of different views. Again, remember that some of them uh, are maybe a little bit strong, but you can always just select the preset and adjust its strength if you want to, and just go through and see what works the best. If you would like to find out more about our romance bundle, then follow the link in the description of this video, or simply jump to our website, cleverphotographer.com. Using the red and white loop offers a great way to enhance your romantic images. However, there are so many other ways on how you can do that using Luminar Neo. And in fact, we have put together a great playlist of different edits that you can watch now and continue learning. On the top of it, our Clever Photographer YouTube channel also have a video for every single tool in this application. So don't get stuck, improve your knowledge and continue editing using our tutorials.